You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Samia Sayed. Welcome to the show. Joining us shortly is Brother Mohammed Sawaf, the CEO of an Islamic financing company, Munzil. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Man charged with attempted murder for drive-by shooting. Report shows Canada's pro-Israel agenda in UN harms its reputation. Human Rights Standing Committee visits British Columbia Mosque. Study shows Muslims underrepresented in top TV shows. And now the details. A 20-year-old Toronto resident, Mohammed Ashan Nasir, has been arrested by the Toronto police and charged with attempted murder for a Scarborough drive-by shooting in April. In a news conference yesterday, a Toronto police superintendent says Natsir is charged with five counts of attempted murder and discharge of a firearm with the intention to endanger life, wound, or prevent arrest. On April 16, at 1 a.m., a group of nearly 15 individuals gathered in a parking lot after Ramadan prayers in the area of Markham Road in Lawrence Avenue East. Nasir opened fire on the group, injuring five male victims. A report published by Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East concludes that Canada's pro-Israel voting record at the United Nations is against its own values and harms its reputation. The report is based on Global Affairs Canada documents obtained through access to information legislation. According to the report, Canadian foreign officials consider Canada's voting record against Palestinian rights at the UN General Assembly inconsistent with Canada's values and interests. Canadian officials have been pushing the Trudeau government since 2016 to adopt a merit-based approach to voting on United Nations Israel-Palestine resolutions. The UN considers annually 10 to 16 resolutions on Palestinian human rights. Canada supports Palestinian self-determination in only one of these. The Senate of Canada's Standing Committee on Human Rights comprising five senators and six executive officials visited Tuesday Masjid al-Salam, an education centre in British Columbia. The committee is studying the role of Islamophobia and its various forms such as physical violence, online hate, and discrimination against Muslims. The study will also focus on sources of Islamophobia and its impact on mental health and government responses to curb the fear of Islam. The committee met with the British Columbia Muslim Association executives and Burnaby branch officials. The Standing Committee on Human Rights is chaired by Senator Selma Talulajan. According to a study released Wednesday by the University of Southern California, Muslim actors are largely absent from or stereotyped negatively in pop culture TV shows. The study reviews 200 top-rated television series from 2018 and 2019 that aired in the U.S., U.K., Australia, and New Zealand. Al-Bab Khan, the study's lead author, says that the underrepresentation of Muslims makes them vulnerable to prejudice, discrimination, and even violence. According to the study, nearly one-third of Muslim characters are depicted on screen as violent offenders and almost 40% are targets of violent attacks. British actor and rapper Riz Ahmed says that the lack of Muslim representation shows Muslims do not belong. That's it for the news. Now, with housing prices in Canada going through the roof, many Canadian Muslims find it increasingly difficult to purchase a house or make any other investments in Canada. Specifically, they're struggling to find an interest-free solution to their financial problems or situations. Munzil is Canada's first Islamic digital bank, and they are doing their best to help these Muslims find a solution. Dr. Mohamed Sawaf, the CEO of Munzil, is joining us now to speak more on the topic. Welcome, Dr. Mohamed. It's great to have you join us today. Thanks for having me, Sister Samuel. Dr. Mohamed, I'm certainly no expert on this topic, but can you outline for me what seems to be this problem or conflict that we have with financing in Canada? Yeah, no, thank you so much. Um, and it's uh, it's the number one question that gets asked. And, you know, first and foremost, uh, because money has no value uh, within Islam, uh, there is an impermissibility to lend money and earn money back, right? So amongst Canadian Muslims, we do not enter into transactions that either pay interest or receive interest, which is called riba. 
And so when you think about, you know, the conventional structures that are out there from an investment perspective or even a financing perspective, that actually limits us from participating in many of the everyday products that, you know, retail banks uh, offer to everyday Canadians. And so what we're finding is that Canadian Muslims are actually financially excluding themselves from participating in home ownership as well as growing their wealth via investment solutions. Mm -hmm. Then what does this term Islamic financing or halal financing come from and what does it mean? Right. So, you know, in Islam, uh, so back to the days of the Prophet, which was 1400 years ago, uh, Islamic finance, the term was coined through the transactions that were created. And so many, uh, many of the transactions that were conducted in, let's call it these prehistoric times, were trade based finance. Right. Uh, you know, we had the dinar and the dirham. The dinar was, you know, asset backed by gold and the dirham was asset backed by silver as commodities. And the dinar had a value of 20 silver dirhams. Uh, and so when they were making uh, transactions, they would introduce these commodity base uh, commodities as the basis of these transactions. There was never, you know, uh, this, uh, let's call it fiat uh, asset, uh, which, you know, what we have every day today in currency, which is not even backed by an asset. Uh, and then you're asking for more money back from this simple paper that's being exchanged uh, as, as a means of, of, of financing or, you know, lending uh, into these uh, transactions. Mm -hmm. Islamic financing seems to be quite lacking in Canada, particularly. How behind is Canada compared to other countries when it comes to Islamic or halal financing? So first and foremost, I would say that we're definitely behind the uh, OIC countries, which stands for the Organization for Islamic Countries. Uh, but even as a G7 country, we're now starting to see ourselves really behind because when you think about um, you know, the U.S., even Australia, and of course, the most exemplar, um, you know, uh, it, it, exemplar country when it comes to Western uh, context of Islamic finance, the U.K., uh, we're nowhere to be seen on that front. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, you know, Australia is, is actually just confirmed that they're establishing the first ever, you know, national Australian Islamic bank. Um, and so, you know, even amongst the Commonwealth countries, Canada is really in its infancy stage um when it comes to you know adopting islamic banking mm -hmm. how much opportunity does this leave open for canada then it's a, a, a huge opportunity in fact um, there's been many studies that have assessed this um, i myself have, have researched this as part of my uh, doctoral research and when we think about the value of islamic banking in canada it just on the halal mortgage front, it's upwards of $400 billion. You know, we're looking at a 2 million Muslim Canadian population today growing to 3 million over the next eight years, which not only makes it the second largest uh, religious base after Catholicism, but actually the fastest growing demographic group within Canada. And so $400 billion financing opportunity from a mortgage perspective, and it's upwards of $50 billion when it comes to the wealth management space that, that can be uh, tackled as well. Mm -hmm. Now you are the co-founder and CEO of Munzil, which is attempting to tap into this market. How did you get started? Oh, I, <laughs> that's, a, that's a long story. And I look, like to think of it as my life's work. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a retail banker at heart, a retail financial advisor. That's kind of where I started uh, back in 2007 uh, and really, you know, kind of rubber hit the road in 2014 when I embarked on my MBA here at the University of Toronto Rotman School of Management. Uh, I had teamed up with a professor that was teaching the only Islamic finance course at the graduate level across Canada uh, by the name of Professor Walid Hijazi. And so, you know, I'd expressed my interest and really that was the premise from a foundational and a theoretical perspective of what is Islamic finance, but can Islamic finance be adopted here in Canada, considering the regulatory, legal, and tax environment um, that's been created. And so since then, uh, I finished a second master's and now finally uh, you know, successfully defended my doctoral thesis within Islamic finance, but wanted to put that academic theoretical or academic theory into practice. And so Menzel was launched I would say in, in an R&D mode perspective in 2017, 
Uh, it took us about two and a half years to, to actually create these products to ensure that not only were they halal or Sharia compliant, but they complied with the secular regulatory tax and, and legal environments. And mm -hmm. so when we launched in 2020, Jan 1st, just before the pandemic hit, we saw an enormous amount of people you know, wanting our products uh, because number one, it, you know, it abided by their faith. Um, they were competitively priced um, and they, you know, they were, they were Sharia compliant or, or, or well structured. Uh, mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing right now is actually demand exceeding supply. Uh, and so we're really trying to tackle the supply side uh, of our business to ensure that we can put every Muslim into uh, home ownership in Canada. And what are some of these products that Munzil offers? So we have uh, a shelf of mortgage products varying from fixed rate and variable rates. Uh, so specifically Murabaha and Musharaka, which just means cost plus or partnership. Uh, we also have uh, wealth management solutions. Uh, so we, you know, directly manufacture funds. Um, you know, our first fund that we've launched is the Menzel Mortgage Fund, which acts like an income bearing fund. And that actually supports our mortgage program. Um, we've partnered with institutions across Canada to be able to distribute this fund on their platform and provide uh, a lower risk uh, solution for Muslim Canadians to invest in uh, in the long term. Uh, we've also partnered with Coho that provides uh, a prepaid card as well as a credit building feature for our community as well so that mm -hmm. they can not only build their credit score in a halal way, but you know they'll be able to have a credit score um, that uh, will allow them to enter into these financial transactions. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working on a bunch of other products that we will be launching soon, inshallah, as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, I hear all of the all this talk about these financial products and services, but I have to ask, what makes you halal certified? So uh, there's a, 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 an, an international body called AUFI uh, that stands for the Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions. Uh, they're actually a Bahraini-based uh, governing or standard body, uh, and they're actually regulated by the Central Bank of Bahrain. Ma the majority of Islamic banks globally adhere to AOFI standards and guidelines and our members participating uh, members within AOFI. Menzel was the first AOFI member as, from a Canadian perspective, right? So we are a AOFI member. We abide by all of the AOFI standards, which is considered the gold standard in Islamic finance. And there's really three main aspects in an Islamic finance organization that need to be implemented. Number one, you need to have a Sharia supervisory board with a minimum of three scholars, which we have. Uh, we have to have external uh, audit, uh, which we also have, and we have internal uh, Sharia advisors uh, as part of the Menzel team to ensure that not only once the products are structured that they're compliant, but in actuality, operationally, when they're being executed, are they following the strict and uh, and and adhering to the actual policies and procedures when it comes to deploying these products and getting them into the hands of Muslim Canadians. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad, for joining us today and telling us a little bit more about the pioneering work Munzil and you, of course, are doing for Islamic financing in Canada. It was a pleasure to have you today. You're most welcome. It's absolutely my pleasure and happy to do this again. You are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. That's it from our Toronto studios tonight. Make sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more Canadian Muslim content. Stay safe and until next time.